All right, and here we are now uh, more than halfway into the chapter on gases. Uh, we've covered a couple laws already. First, we did the uh, Boyle's Law, and, and then uh, just last uh, section, we did uh, the Charles Law example, and now we're on to our third and final named uh, single law with uh, gases. Okay, so here we are moving into a temperature and pressure relationship, Gay-Lussac's law, um, and uh, we'll uh, stop with the name laws for a little bit. After this, we're going to move into the combined gas law that uh, takes advantage of relationships uh, that we learned from Boyle's law and Charles' law and what we'll learn here with Gay-Lussac's law uh, to get a combined gas law. And then we'll come back to probably the most famous name for us as chemists uh, to do with gases, and that'll be Avogadro's law uh, later on in the chapter. Okay, so Gay-Lussac's law states that the pressure exerted by a gas is directly related to the Kelvin temperature. So that should sound a lot like Charles' law, right? In Charles' law, instead of pressure, we were looking at volume, but because we had a direct relationship with temperature, we had uh, the same sort of form of the equation as we'll see down at the bottom. So in this case, we're holding volume and number of moles constant. As a reminder, for Charles' law, we held pressure and number of moles constant. And finally, uh, because of the direct relationship, an increase in temperature increases the pressure of a gas, or an increase in pressure would increase the temperature uh, in that same direct relationship. So here we see P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So uh, looks very much like Charles' law, just uh, with pressure in place of volume. And if we look at our um, uh, right-hand uh, picture, we see an original temperature of 200 Kelvin and a pressure of one atmosphere. Well, if we double that absolute temperature to 400 Kelvin, now uh, because those uh, particles are moving twice as fast on average, that's going to result in twice as many collisions with the wall of the container and therefore a pressure that is twice the original pressure, two atmospheres versus one atmosphere. All right, so let's work a problem uh, with calculations involving Gay-Lussac's law. Here we have a gas has a pressure at two atmospheres, 2.0, remember those sig figs, uh, at 18 degrees Celsius. What is the new pressure when the temperatures increase to 62 degrees Celsius? And as a reminder, volume and number of moles are constant. So step one, organize the data into a table and analyze the problem. So uh, here we have conditions one, we have P1 equals 2.0 atmospheres, T1 equals 18 degrees Celsius, but we've already learned we've got to convert into Kelvin, especially when dealing with gas law problems. And that gives us a value of 291 Kelvin. P2 is our unknown, T2, that's 62 degrees Celsius. Uh, we'll go ahead and convert it to Kelvin to get 335 Kelvin. We see that we have a temperature increase, so we predict that we'll have a pressure increase as well. Moving on to step two, now we can rearrange that gas law equation to solve for our unknown. So uh, in order to isolate P2, we'll multiply uh, that side and therefore both sides by T2. And we've rearranged now to have P2 equals P1 times T2 over T1. Moving on to our final step here, we substitute in the values from the problem and calculate the result. So P2 equals P1, 2.0 atmospheres, times uh, T2 over T1, 335K divided by 291K, and that gives us a final value of 2.3 atmospheres. So hopefully you were able to follow along and uh, work this one with me because now we'll get ready for a learning check for you to do on your own. Okay, in this learning check, uh, you're told to solve for the final pressure of a gas with an initial pressure of 1.20 atmospheres at 75 degrees Celsius when cooled to minus 22 degrees Celsius. Again, V and N are held constant, so go ahead. Uh, I, Sure, I don't have to tell you this by now, but uh, you'll convert those temperatures uh, and um, go ahead and solve for your final pressure. Pause the video here, uh, do your uh, steps, and then uh, start it back up, and we'll see how you did. Okay, so hopefully you went through the steps as we did together. So step one, organize the data into a table and then analyze the problem. So uh, P1 equals 1.20 atmospheres. T1, the 75 degrees Celsius, when you convert into Kelvin, gives you 348K. P2 
P2 is what we're solving for in this example. Uh, T2 is a minus 22 degrees Celsius, which when we uh, convert into Kelvin gives us a positive 251 K. So we see that we have a temperature decrease and therefore we predict we will have a pressure decrease due to the direct relationship from Gay-Lussac's law. Moving on to step two now, we can rearrange the gas law to solve for the unknown quantity. So in this case, uh, because we're looking for P2, we're going to multiply both sides by T2 and then rearrange uh, left and right sides of the uh, equation to yield P2 equals P1 times T2 divided by T1. All right, and if you've made it this far, then uh, just be careful about your calculations because you've done all the right work. We don't want to have a calculator error throw us off here. So P2 equals 1.20 atmospheres times 251 Kelvin divided by 348 Kelvin gives us a uh, final pressure, a, a pressure at condition two of 0 0.866 atmospheres. So hopefully that went uh, well. It wasn't much different from the one we worked together, just some different values for our pressure and temperatures. Okay, so now that we hopefully have a good handle on Gay-Lussac's law, uh, we can talk about the concept of vapor pressure. So if you think about a closed container, the vapor above a liquid uh, will accumulate and create its own pressure called vapor pressure. So in addition to um, atmospheric pressure, if the um, uh, vessel was sealed uh, with atmospheric pressure uh, contained inside, uh, what will also happen if you think about like a closed bottle of water uh, or uh, carbonated beverage like soda, uh, you're going to have um, vapor pressures. You're going to have the water, uh, which is going to escape to some degree into the gas phase. Uh, and also, if you think about a pressurized thing like soda, you'd have uh, carbon dioxide as well, and things get very complicated very quickly. So um, if we have a sealed container, uh, that liquid is going to exert its vapor pressure at a given temperature, and it's going to be temperature dependent because as the temperature increases, you're going to get more of the liquid converting into vapor and therefore a higher vapor pressure. This is one reason it's very dangerous to heat sealed containers because eventually as the vapor pressure builds to a certain amount, the uh, walls of the container can fail and then you can have uh, hot vapor and liquid uh, spraying out in all directions. So um, vapor pressure is an important idea, especially uh, if you uh, do something silly like toss in a sealed container into a fire um, and you'll learn unfortunately very quickly and possibly very dangerously how important vapor pressure can be. Uh, in our course we tend to deal with water as our uh, typical liquid uh, and uh, the table of 7.4 in the text gives the vapor pressure of water at various temperatures. And as we see, uh, at 100 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of water is 760 millimeters of mercury or one atmosphere. Uh, and therefore, that's the temperature at which the um, liquid reaches its boiling point for water. And uh, that um, 760 millimeters of mercury vapor pressure is equal to the external pressure. Uh, most of the time, as we said, the average atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. Uh, and therefore, uh, now the gas can escape and boil off. All the molecules have enough uh, energy to uh, become gases. And we also see that uh, 37 degrees Celsius, another important temperature, body temperature, as our table points out, um, the vapor pressure of uh, water is about 47 millimeters of mercury. So it, it's not, uh, again, if, unless you're thinking in Kelvin temperatures, uh, we have uh, fairly dramatic uh, increases uh, with the uh, Celsius temperature increases because really it's based on absolute temperature. So now when we said that the 760 millimeters of mercury there at 100 degrees Celsius uh, is the uh, boiling point of water, that's what we call the normal boiling point. That's the boiling point at one atmosphere. However, water's boiling point depends on a few things. It depends on the vapor pressure. It's lower at higher altitudes, as we saw previously in this chapter, uh, which is why you have those high altitude baking instructions for things like cakes, uh, where you have the water uh, boiling at a lower temperature and therefore cooking at a longer time to get the same result. Uh, finally, it's also uh, increased by using an autoclave to increase external 
pressure so that you can um, you know kill microorganisms uh, by using an autoclave if you've ever uh, worked with that sort of device um, and if you're going into the health professions maybe uh, you may not have used an autoclave yet but you might see one in use uh, in your professional life and it's a nice way to um, increase the boiling point of water by increasing that external pressure and allowing uh, that uh, increased pressure to um, aid in the killing of microorganisms while uh, being able to recover the containers that you're cleaning through that autoclave. So we see here is that um, temperature increases, I'm sorry, pressure increases rather, the boiling point of water increases. And anyone who's used a pressure cooker, you don't even have to go to an autoclave to see this sort of thing. A pressure cooker cooks food uh, much faster because you're able to cook the food at a higher temperature by altering the boiling point of water through the use of a pressurized container. So before we leave this section, let's uh, end with a final learning check. Uh, in this learning check, you're asked which pairs of pressure will boil water. So we have atmospheric pressure and vapor pressure uh, for A, B, and C. So go ahead and uh, make your selection and uh, see which pairs you think will boil water. Stop the video here and start back up once you've made your selection. Okay, hopefully you didn't fall for my trick there because you're not really making a selection. You made two selections. In the first case, we had the atmospheric pressure being the normal one atmosphere or 760 millimeters of mercury and the vapor pressure of the uh, water being also 760 millimeters of mercury. So we're right at the boiling point. So boiling will occur um, in uh, case B, we have an atmospheric pressure uh, that's higher, 960 millimeters of mercury, compared with that uh, 760 millimeters of mercury vapor pressure. So because we're below the vapor pressure, we won't get boiling, although we will get evaporation. And then finally, in choice C, uh, very low atmospheric pressure of 520 millimeters of mercury, uh, 620 millimeters of mercury vapor pressure. So because the vapor pressure exceeds the atmospheric pressure, yes, indeed, boiling will occur. So uh, aside from falling for my trick, which I set you up for, uh, don't feel too badly if you just selected one uh, instead of both A and C. But uh, aside from that, if you're um, having trouble, uh, things aren't making sense, please do reach out to me for some guidance. Uh, if things are going very well, as I hope they are, then we'll meet again for section six.